In this tutorial, I will use Ajax to extract data from pollen.com. Here, if I click any state, it'll take me to the state map and I'll be able to select any particular city. And if I click a city, it'll take me to the allergy report, and if I click history, it'll show me the historical data. I'll open up the developer tools and select the network tab. Then I'll refresh the page and select the XHR filter to see Ajax requests only. We can see that this request contains the data we need in JSON format, so I'll copy the link address. Now I'll expand Data Flow, right click Ajax and select Create to create a new Ajax request, which I will call Pollen. This will produce a function that will parse our requests using a particular JSON scheme. I'll press the JSON schema inference button and paste the API URL here. Then I'll press the Download JSON button to get the JSON data. We can see that the server returned an error, perhaps because the request was missing some information, such as cookies. To fix this, I'll click the Headers tab on Developer Tools and on Request Headers, I'll press View Source to see the raw HTTP request. Then I'll copy the whole request and paste it on the URL input box. Now I'll press Download JSON again, and then press Infer JSON Schema and save the changes. Once an AJAX request has been created, I can use it inside any global under the AJAX category. This action takes a URL, but it can also take a raw HTTP request, so I'll copy the whole request and paste it here. Note that Helium has escaped all the line breaks. If I run this now, a set of tables, having the same structure as the JSON data, will be created and populated. But I would like to be able to use different requests. If we look at the raw HTTP request, we can see that a zip code appears on a couple of places. I'll replace them with the word zip code. Then I'll replace this string with the string replace function. For the input, I'll copy and paste the full request. As the pattern, I'll type zip code. And for the replacement, I will type some random zip code. Now, if I run this, it'll request the data for that particular zip code. I'll now copy this whole action, and create a new global called get zip data. Here, I'll create a function with a single parameter called zip code. Now I'll paste the action I just copied, and replace this literal zip code with the zip code parameter. This way, I can replace this action with get zip data by passing a zip code as the argument. But instead of using a single zip code each time, I'll create a new table called input with a single column called zip code. I already have a few sample zip codes which I'll copy and paste there. Then I'll select Data, Input, which represents our table, and then right-click it and select Output Result. Finally, I'll select Get Zip Data and pass the zip code variable as the argument. Now I'll clear the main table set and run this again.
I can then export this table set as an XML, in order to see the data in a single file grouped by location. This concludes our tutorial.